really when I have decided uh, to be on my own as an entrepreneur, after preparing myself uh, throughout uh, the period when I was attached to the multinational company, uh, that perhaps is the turning point in my life that uh, I have a destination uh, to meet. Hey, Isham. Hey. Hello, I haven't seen you since graduation day. Yeah, that's right. So, how are things with you? I fine. In fact, I going to report for my duty after tomorrow. Oh, you got a job? Congratulations. Thanks, man. I landed the job with the Ministry of Home Affairs. How about you? Any luck yet? Yep. I got a few offers. But I decided to join a multinational company, Roaring Partners. I'm sure you heard of it. Yup, definitely. Man, that company will eat you alive. You know how it is in the private sector. I got a few offers from private companies. But no, I think I prefer to be somewhere skilled and less happy. Of course, of course. I understand what you mean. Okay. I have to go now. Good luck to you. Same to you. What are the factors contributing and influencing to his success? He was before just a normal government servant doing his day-to-day -day work 9 to 5. And what he is today? He is a successful Bumiputra entrepreneur in Malaysia. The factors that influence him, that elevate him, is his strong foresight, his vision. He anticipates change. He innovates things. When you anticipate change, you will be able, you will, not to say you will be able, you will practice creativity and innovation. This is in order to surprise and impress customers and to be in the competitive age. Always consider what is necessary for society as a whole and what contribution that he can make to the society. This requires each of us to have a vision of our future and the desire to be a pioneer. This is what Haji Fauzi believes in. From that day onward, uh, I planned my career, I planned my company's uh, path uh, to a destination where I want to go and the greatest turning point is being able to implement what I plan and to realize what the plan is. Uh, this is the biggest uh, achievement. Uh, we have done actually what MoFAS has done. We have uh, innovated a lot of industries. Uh, we are pioneering into a lot of industry until today, uh, even the modern days industry, we are still pioneering into the industries. So the turning point is uh, being able to get these industries and kickstart the industry and leave the industry to grow. Uh, this is this is the biggest turning point for us, the biggest achievement for us. Hey Malik. Hey Isham. Ah, it's been so long. How are you? Come, sit down. Join me. What are you doing here, Isham? I thought you are working in Damansara. Oh, I'm attending a meeting in KL. So, how have you been? Are you still with that multinational company? Yes. Okay. How's work? It's tough, but I'm surviving. Tough? Eh, yep. I'm learning a lot. Burning skills, acquiring knowledge of the market. Do you know that kind of things? Hmm, interesting. So how long do you think you are going to be with them? Not sure yet, 
maybe a few years more. So, what do you plan to do then? Be on my own? Really? Wow! You are so ambitious. Well, I have to. It's about time Guru Putra like us become ambitious. Don't you think? Hmm, yeah. You are right. Apart from this, he practiced high quality leadership skills. What it takes to be a high quality leader? What do you need to do? You need to understand the relevant to success. You need to be action oriented. You need to provide necessary resources to the people working with you, to, the, to your employees, to your teammates. You need to plan. Whereby Haji Fauzi is a good planner and he directs, he himself directs implementation and helps in identifying and resolve problems within his organization. The biggest challenge, uh, uh, because of my uh, foundation, uh, I was in the multinationals in the early 60s, uh, where there is, uh, there was at the time, very little nations uh, working uh, for multinational uh, led it be the Bumiputras, you know. Uh, those days, in the early 60s, uh, many relations of Bumiputra feel a lot more safe to go into the government services than going to work for the private sector because of the security. Uh, you have a pension, you have a uh, you, you, you get paid every month, but in private sectors those days, it was not as organized as what it is today. And opportunities are not that rampant. So the greatest challenges for me is uh, I have gone through a system where do not uh, necessarily that if you want to move forward, uh, you need a lot of uh, uh, support or you depend on other external forces. So you have to learn to crawl and walk on your own and face a lot of things uh, as it comes naturally. Uh, I think this, this hardship that I've been through has, has given me a lot of uh, resistance to a, a lot of forces that's facing me. So in short to say, in order to be a quality leader, you need to be a challenger. Challenge yourself. Challenge your organization. Challenge your employees. Challenge your environment. You need to be a prober. What do you probe for? Probe for answers. Probe for problems. Solve the problems. Coach your employee. You need to be a coach. Whereby, in, to be a good coach, you need to have also the skills of human relations. And last but not least, you need to be an enabler. What is it, an enable? Enable your people, coach them, give them, provide them necessary resources. This is what it meant by enabler. So after 30 years, uh, where we started in the, the preliminary stage, then we go into the intermediate stage. And we decide after 30 years, uh, we begin to relook into our product and services line that we are in. For instance, uh, we have been in the tobacco business uh, for the last 29 years. But today we decided perhaps that is a sunset industry and there are so many anti-social, um, uh, what for the feelings against this sort of unhealthy product. Even though we are charting about 60, 70 million turnover a year, but uh, we can feel a situation that uh, maybe we should not uh, uh, be in this business because uh, at the same time we are promoting health products. Okay, we have uh, our branding of a uh, formula for fitness first, uh, or in short, F41. So it doesn't jive, it doesn't, it doesn't fit uh, the image if you are in tobacco and trying to sell health products. So because of that, we, we divest, divest uh, the business of tobacco after 29 years. And uh, we are now looking what can we do to assist the global warming, uh, the problem of global warming. 
this is the thing that we feel that we want to be always the pioneers in whatever uh, the new technology or whatever the new field of uh, opportunity. Uh, when we say about uh, contributing to the society, it's not just society, but I want to contribute if possible to the mankind, uh, which is the glo global. We have now a company called uh, Mofas Green Planet. Uh, we call it uh, 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 M. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, we are trying to go into a situation whereby, if we do plant something, we could have to produce more vegetation, which means more food. And we we, we come up with something that is away from the normal kind of a uh, technique of planting. And we have come with a product called soil activator. And uh, this is marvelous and uh, new kind of technology that can use on top soil of any kind, especially even in the desert. So you are aware that uh, vegetation needs water, but with the new technology of soil activator, we do not really depend on water because it changes the characteristic of the vegetation or the plant. Instead of getting the water uh, from the roots, then they get the water from the atmosphere. So everywhere in the atmosphere, there are 20% or 25% moisture. So with the top soil, the soil activator, uh, we can then grow almost anything in the desert. And imagine the potential, uh, not just from the commercial side, but uh, the potential, the benefit to the mankind, the places where they never have any uh, place to, to, to grow food. They can grow food now. Hey, Malik! Hey, Isham! Oh, how are you? Long time not see. Yes, it's been a long time. So, how have you been? I've been fine. Mm. Still with that uh, multinational company? No, nope. I own my own now. Here's my card. Wow! Now you are the CEO of Mali Industries. I'm impressed. What kind of business do you do? Oh, aviation, automotive, and marines. To name a few, I try to diversify my business. Okay. Okay, I have to go now. Call me when you're free. Oh, okay. Bye. Bye. Being an uh, entrepreneur uh, is never easy, but it's not difficult. It is not impossible. It is all about your framework of mind. Uh, you need really a strong mental and a strong discipline. I guess like any other uh, thing that you want to do in life, uh, even in setting up a home, uh, you don't have a strong discipline and you do have a, a strong perseverance, uh, the holes will break easily. The same thing in business. Uh, first thing, you must know the business that you are going in. Uh, it's not instant noodles. You have to learn from the bottom.